when we talk about addiction we talk about three basic stages of addiction here people are either hooked that's the first stage they just started with addiction right they don't even know or maybe they don't even accept that they are addicted to something simply hooked with something but before i all know start telling you all this let me understand the term addiction from your perspective the modern term what addiction can be what cannot be addiction what's your myth and everything else one ring so what's your perspective about you know when people there's a lot of myth people talk about these days what is your understanding and perspective uh speaking from ex your own experience when we talk about addiction how how can you simplify for people what do you think addiction is um yeah that that left me uh, off guard you just took my name anyways um i think the right the right word is uh, hooked the one you just used here yes i think that's a very good word and a very modern you know explanation yes. of what addiction is yes. because when we talk about hooked and addiction it is about um being caught into it's like a trap so addiction is something that for some it's like you knowingly get in for some you don't know that you're getting in but you're already there you are uh -huh. just trapped there so it can be anything else it can start from substance to you know using something external absolutely. so yeah i mean just simplifying it you can check with the others too no absolutely thank you very much yes uh uh mr prashant you wanna say what is your personal understanding and don't worry about being right or being good you know there are three kinds of answers my answers your answers and their answers no answer is right answer wrong answer so perfect uh, you personally yeah, according to me i feel like addiction is something you know which uh, the habit turns into a regular habit mm. a person is not able to you know Uh, feel um, uncomfortable without happening those things like suppose i have a habit of brushing my teeth at morning 7 o'clock okay. so similar habit can be like i need to smoke after my food or after my tea or snacks so that a pattern of life i feel which becomes really difficult for a person to you know break so that becomes an addiction now at what extreme end the addiction can be depends some people can also balance those habit and addictions some people can't they go in an extreme end so this is how we need to consult the doctor and this is how we go in counseling now all right Thanks. beautiful well, thank you for sharing your views uh alisha or seha any one of you want to share anyone literally what's your existing understanding um, addiction uh, maybe when we know that uh, it has uh, some habit has harmful consequences mm. but still we are not able to stop that habit right and simultaneously that turns into addiction mm. it may be uh, addiction of using internet addiction of uh, eating something or uh, substance abuse right got you got you oh good good i know that you mentioned you know harmful consequences that was important term here you know that that separates this from habit so yes good we'll talk all about this you know we'll discuss this like anything so we'll really clear the concept but thank you alisha you also want to share yeah i feel addiction a person gets addicted to something when you that it becomes the behavior becomes repetitive mm -hmm. you have no control over it Oh yeah, and also it starts interfering with your daily life activities. Got you. So the beautiful word here is no control. You feel of losing, you know, you know, getting out of normalcy. It can be there is a new type, new normal, but that happens. But yeah, so this is what it. Good. Thank you for sharing. Let's see. So three stages we discussed here, and uh, hooked. is a first stage first the second stage in addiction is hacked 
So understand the term hacked. When something is hacked, then you see, Alicia, you were talking about control. This is where you lose the control. First stage, you don't lose the control. You are hooked. First stage is exactly the word what you know, Bhati used, which was this, trapped, but not hacked. So trapped, but not hacked. Second stage is hacked, where a lot of malfunctions are here. Things start getting out of your control. Sometimes you get on a track, sometimes you miss on a track. And the last stage is hijacked. You are no longer you, period. Neither you know, nor other know. You are no longer you. So three stages you have. Hooked, hacked, hijacked. So whenever you speak with someone or you know, giving a, either professional advice, first, it is important for you to know that what stage a person is at. Is it just hooked? That if you're just hooked, your pitch, counseling pitch, should not be of hacked or hijacked. It's like doctor. If I go to a doctor and I say, I'm sorry, I'm having a fever, what would he say? Go to ICU. He won't say, right? And if he does, I'm not a good doctor. So before you start solving the problem, you need to identify the temperament of the problem. You need to weigh the problem. Right? So this is the first stage. Identification stage. Identify first. And according to as a professional, you know, as you start giving advice or something. So identification is the first stage. Identify. Is he hooked? Is he hacked? Or is he hijacked? Now, let me also add some other elements here. You understand it's easy to get someone out when someone is just hooked. It's a li little difficult when hacked. It's a very difficult when hijacked. Okay, let's accept the fact. This is how it is. Now, I'll again add another element here. When someone is just hooked, talk therapy, psychotherapy, counseling, this can be very, very effective. Even if someone is hacked, talk therapy, other therapies, alternative therapies can be very, very helpful. But if someone is hijacked, comes to medicines, talk therapy won't help. Very rare, almost no chance. Now, what I'm trying to tell you here, I'm trying to tell you here, that even if you're as a counselor, understand and respect the importance of medicines. Many times it generally happens. People are people watchful for what they practice. This is good, you know. If you are just a counselor, you believe in counseling people, getting people out of something, perfectly okay. But realize that there is a stage when talk therapy won't work. There is a stage, you know, psychotherapy is all things, it won't work. You have to come to medicines. How this understand? I'll give you a layman example. You need to understand. So when the door is closed. You need to find a window to get in. Whatever happens in talk therapy, what do you generally do? You talk, you discuss in different sessions, you do different therapies. So you try to get you know, from the do. And then gradually you want to get into person's mind and change hormones and feelings changes and gradually you want to do. But the do is closed. Then you have to come inside out. First the step is outside in change. The second one is if you do reverse, hijack to hack to hooked, then it's inside out approach. Then medicines are very effective. So never took this as an ego as a counselor. You know, I have to help a lot of people. Maybe I can help. I should help. Why not? No. And to give a simple example, do you see that? The moment doctor sees, and if they know for example, this is a hijacked case, for example, the refer. They don't start operating persons. They don't take it on their ego on their MBBS degree. Right? They immediately refer. I'm sorry, I think this needs to be referred. So understand this. Throughout the session, I'll keep talking about the content and uh, how you should be acting as a professional at the same time. Make sense, everyone? Can we move? Very good. All right, let's see. 
Now, next that we have is, uh, you know, and this can be absolutely beautiful. And this is the theory, you know, uh, that you guys were talking about right now. So birth of addiction, how addiction is born. And here, Mr. Prashant was absolutely right. right. This is how, this is a journey. So addiction is born from interest, mere interest. You must be thinking, really? So what do you think? I mean, we should stop taking interest in things? I don't know, but we'll talk about this. So just know that this is starts from interest, then continues as hobby, then moves as a habit, then becomes compulsion, and then addiction. So interest, hobby, habit, compulsion, and addiction. Now, if you remember your own days, or if you remember, you know, uh, maybe, you know, I need to ask. Um, so, uh, Prashant, uh, do you remember uh, sometimes in your, you know, when you were in school or maybe college sometimes, somebody, your guardian or somebody asking you or stopping you from some getting into bad company or bad stuff? Is any example that you can share with us? Ever your father said, Kine, ni, ni. even if there was not harmful, but he said, Kine, ni, 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 you don't have to do this. Or you, you can do this. Anything? No, just yeah, a simple thing. Usually during my school timing, on, when I was on 10th and all, uh -huh. just after school or after coaching, we used to gather all the friends, we used to gather together. And uh, sometimes or the other, we try to smoke. Oh. And somebody, somebody tried to you know, say, you just try to smoke, it's wonderful. Just try to right. make you smoke. It's like you're a man. So that is how in the gossiping that area was happening. That is what my parents always told me. Please don't be with friends around. Don't get around these guys. Yeah. Don't get into that company, right? Yeah, Please yeah. So I was, yeah. I was like, you know, wasting my time. I mean, after my classes and coaching around two to three hours, just sitting around, just, you know, yeah, just uh, uh, exploring these new days. passions, you know, for you <laughs> those yeah. days. Knowing each other, that is what was there after. Right, right. I think if you understand this fact, you know, today is a great time. Right now is a great time. You can understand why people who care for you stop you from something like this. However, if you see, there's nothing harm in talking about how to smoke. But why do you really see that your loved ones? Are so forceful and I'm gonna say something really beautiful right now this will help you understand not just you but this you can use this sentence to anyone this can be you know uh, what do you say punchline to uh, help someone you know really think different and my teacher will say that so one of my teachers used to say that the reason you should not try every bad thing because what are you going to do if you start liking them and this sounds a little contradictory to a modern times a modern society because people believe in exploring anything and everything literally anything and everything the beautiful example is <laughs> coronavirus coming from bat because somebody decided okay i'll try this out do that so and that was a great thing that you know explorations or trying everything in the world has or may have its own consequence what what are you gonna do if you start liking it okay if you don't like it cool like some people say okay let's try this let's try this cool try this but if you start liking it and this is a bad stuff you're never gonna leave it so addiction starts from interest, continues as hobby. And gradually that interest converts into hobby. Whenever you have free time, this is what you do. Whenever you have some space, this is what you do. And then this hobby gradually converts into habit. Habit means you always try to prioritize this, you know, over everything else, over all the hobbies, 
This is one thing that you do. And you may, may not be aware, other people find this in you. And they say, you know what? You have a habit of doing this. You have a habit of this. You have a habit of this. Thing with a, thing with a habit is that you don't realize that you have it most of the times, unless someone starts telling you, and then you know, oh, okay, so you have a habit of this now. And then this habit has compulsion. What is your stage of compulsion? When you feel bad if you don't do it, when you can't help doing it, when you, feel, when you don't feel normal when you don't do it, and then that compulsion becomes addiction. And addiction how? First stage, hooked, and then hacked, and then hijacked. Understood the cycle, the basics of how it starts. So now you realize the sooner it is addressed, better it is. Otherwise, this is going to be really difficult. So that's a birth of addiction. This is how addiction is born. Now, let's understand what are the source of addiction. Birth, understood. Cycle, understood. Stages, understood. Where does this addiction come from? If I have to stop this, apart from the small tips and tricks that we see everywhere, what is the basic concept that I need to use? Let's say if you are helping someone with addiction, you need to create a strategy of. How would you create a strategy? What are the sources that you have? Simple. There are three key sources for addiction. Time, an amount, and want. Length of time, amount of use, how much amount you use. And then force of want. Desire is okay, but how much desire you have? What is the level of force you have? So three, there are three key sources that you have. And we'll talk about this. So how many of you are addicted to a web series or TV, TV series? Shanti, you are? I'm addicted to it. I'm addicted to Netflix. So uh -huh. the series, I keep on watching until late <laughs> midnight right. to complete the seasons. Yeah, it happens. Absolutely. Absolutely. Very true. Very true. Yes. Do you know and do you realize that all these movies and series and games, these all are on addictive theory? These are created on addictive theory. The how to make something addictive. Everything, all of these. It, it's, it's not luck by chance that this happened. This is how it is designed. That somebody gets hooked. This is how it's designed. So first one is length of time. So let me, no, let's understand. Let's explore your own little addiction and people that you have known. Let's see that. First, length of time. So you will see that if you spend some time watching it, like you know, Pushan uh, uh, said that you know, um, watching Netflix. If you only watch Netflix sometime, you know, a few minutes, thirty minutes, one hour, sometimes, you will not be addicted. You will never be addicted. So first is length of time. How much time you spend? Because time creates addiction, attachment. So the more time you spend, it creates attachment. Now attachment gradually develops as an addiction. So first is the length of time, TV series, social media. You see that the more time you spend, then there is a chance for addiction. Sometimes there is no chance of addiction because time is a food for addiction. The more time you give, the stronger it becomes. That's the first. Second is amount of use. Let's say, not necessarily all time. Let's say somebody smokes, uh, takes coffee, like I take a lot of coffee, uh, cigarette, you know, anything like this. So sometimes you'll see it's not about the time. It's not that someone is smoking uh, every minute. No, amount of use. Whenever they do, they do just too much. Not the length of time, 
the amount of use that they have. So every time they do, they do too much. Every time they do, they do too much. And that, that is one of the source of addiction. So using something more becomes addictive. You must see people who you, you know, eat uh, junk food or maybe pizza or something. They have a habit of eating a lot whenever they eat. So that, that becomes a source of addiction. Coffee. Some people, I will not lie, I have this big mug. So you can imagine this is, so this generally happens. Amount of use, you use so much in amount, it becomes an addiction. Even if you do not spend a lot of time doing that. Third is force of want. Sometimes addiction happens. One of the source of addiction is when your force of wanting something is really high. The desire is very strong. You're not spending a lot of time necessarily. Maybe not a lot of amount of use or anything, but force of want. Like I can tell you, and we'll not only talk about the substance that people generally understand, or mostly they understand the addiction goes around substance abuse. That's a part of it, a piece of it. We'll talk in detail, 360 degree. What is it? Do you understand and realize, and how many of you agree maybe, you know? Alicia, do you think that there can be, people can be addicted to people? Yeah, definitely. Okay. All right. Who else believes that? This is, this is possible. Shriyasi, you believe there can be people addiction? Okay. Yeah, I totally believe that. And this can be as lethal as anything else, as other addictions? It can be. All right. Beautiful. Okay. Very good. Uh, Bhati, if you also want to you know, intervene or come in between, please feel free. Or the other participants too. The reason I may not name all of them because I don't see their pictures. So there is no way I can do. I know they are there. So if you want to come on a video, they will be easy for me to interact with you, just in case. Otherwise, we are fine. Now, so folks of want. Sometimes you know that you never know how addicted you are to someone unless they get separated, unless you lose them unless they're out of the routine. Forget about people. You never know how much attached or addicted you were to your own place. Has it ever happened with you that you went to a relative or someplace outside and you just can't sleep? First time you went outside, you, can, you only feel sleep in your own bed, in your own room, you can't sleep outside. Place. So addiction is not limited to only things that we talk about. It can be literally anything. Sometimes people are so addicted to environment, to settings, to certain, um, you know, maybe anything, literally anything around them, they can be. We'll talk about this. So three sources are new. Why it is important for you to know the sources, not just to know that these are the sources of addiction, but whenever you want to help someone, De-addict. This is where you attack. So the first strategy should be how to minimize the length of time that he or she spends. How to help someone minimize the amount of use that he or she has. How to help someone minimize the desire, the strong desire that someone has for something. This is going to be your solution and strategy. So if you know what the problems are made of, you know how you can solve it. So these are the sources that you have. Length of time, amount of use, and force of want. Sometimes you see that. If the force can come down, people can be de-addicted. They don't need it anymore. The force changed, and the same thing that they were killing people for will stop. And this is where psychotherapy works really, really great. So psychotherapy generally uh, works on force of want a lot. Because length of time and amount of use can also work, but both of them, both these, are, these things are action-oriented. Force of want is emotion-oriented. So psychotherapy, you know, is a really great thing. So they, what they do is they minimize your force of want. Since they can't control you 24-7, so they can't really 
follow you about the amount of time and amount of use, but definitely this. Who uses amount of time and amount of use? Uh, rehabilitation center. They force you not to do this. They literally force you. They have a cell they, they put you to. So they, their solution is action oriented. Psychotherapy is words, is different. Very good. Let's move to the next slide. What are the common types of addiction that you have? These are the common types of addiction that you have. What can be? Let's start from people addiction. Both emotional and physical. You know, people are sometimes emotionally so much addicted to someone. And how much addicted? How can you know or how would you debate or prove that people can be, or maybe do you want to answer this? How would you convince someone that people can be addicted to people so much? If you have to convince them in one line, one sentence, or quickly, how would you do that? Anyone can answer. What examples you will give that someone can understand? Yeah, people can be super addictive to people. Obsession. Yeah. Obsession. Obsession, certainly. But any concrete example that you want to give the people like, wow, yes. Anything practical? Obsession is a good word, yes. It's like in a relationship. Yeah, it's mostly in a relationship. Yeah. Either, you Usually, know, yeah. affection to, romantic relationship to, any, any, any yeah. sort of, yes. Yes. Um, it can be um, an attachment, an yeah. unhealthy or an enmeshed attachment mm -hmm. with a person. Certainly. Um, certainly. So attachment can be unhealthy because when you are very obsessed beyond your need absolutely or, or so you you cannot you cannot think otherwise you cannot see yourself as an as a separate individual mm. but you have so much merged with the person Got you. that um you are no longer independently thinking or feeling or saying anything you constantly right. need that person around so mm. i see that as an addiction yeah, absolutely. Very true. And uh, I'll give you with the example. People can be addicted to people so much that they can suicide. Correct. And now you can just know people love nothing in life more than life. And they can give life like this. That's a strong their attach their attachment or addiction can be on someone. And uh, what is very right here. They can't see themselves a separate individual anymore. They're so much entangled, they don't know where they start, where they begin. They believe that they start from them, they begin with them, they live with them, they die with them. They don't find their own origination. How? When you see a tree, tree looks like the tree, the visual part of it. That is the only part that you see. When you uproot that tree, you see how much soils it takes away with it. It creates a really big pit. That's how people get addicted to people. But they only get to know when they're separated. So physical and emotional too. You know, sometimes people have who have been in a very romantic relationship, they have, they can be so much physically addicted to people that they can kill. Physical ad addiction and emotional, the, the difference between the intensity of physical addiction is very, very high. But Emotional, the longevity of emotional addiction is very long. So people who are emotionally addicted, they have a really good longevity. Intensity may, may not be. The people who are physically addicted, the intensity is very high. That's why you see, you know, people do stuff that you can never imagine. Um, so they become psychopathic. So it's generally happened. Second is work. Oh. And yes, super addictive. Now, I must be thinking, I'm working too, you guys are working too, but this is chance and this is where it is. You know, it can be super addictive. Who can you think of the examples? Researchers, sci scientists. Have you seen a movie, A Beautiful Mind? 
Okay, you might want to see. So um, you know that it's not faking. The people don't feel like eating. They don't feel like eating when they're lost in the world. They don't remember when they ate, when they did not. It's absolutely gone. So work can be a huge addiction. Substance, of course, very common and known one. Internet can be a huge addiction to a lot of people. Once the net is gone, <laughs> they believe life is gone. Without internet, I mean, Maslow's theory, uh, so I saw a picture where people, uh, <laughs> from the basic needs, physical needs, they added two more things. Masks, that was, you know, even before, and the internet was even before. So founding need was internet. In coronavirus, there was a you know, creative art that people put in Maslow's theory. So even before that, the, the, the physiological need, it was mask and then it was internet. And that's true. Take internet away from people. Then see, it becomes, it just happens. So internet and browsing, social media, you know how addictive they are. You put one of your good looking photo, photos and then you see how many times you check uh, Facebook or you know, Instagram or something. Especially who liked, who did not like, and it's all addictive. I'm not saying good or bad, I'm just saying addictive. Um, sometimes social uh, browsing can be random browsing. You started opening something else, something clicked, you clicked on this and then you never know. Two hours gone, can be super addictive. Especially when you're lying in a bed, you're trying to sleep, you just thought of seeing your phone, and then you're gone. So, gambling goes without saying. And the finest examples you can see people in US. In India may not be that much, but in US, oh, comes in one of the top addictions. Because of legalized gambling. In India, we too have legalized gambling. I'm not sure, maybe in Goa and Casino. But in US, it's like a lot of places. Games and videos. Games theory is based on addictive theory. Games are created. Entire gaming thing is on psychology. We are starting a course right now, I mean, uh, real soon, called Tech Psychology. Because, you know, in Tech Psychology, we Psychology is not only limited to that we talk about person to person or counseling on therapies. No, this is just a part of it. The whole universe, the whole world is on a different level of psychology. And this is what we are trying to change in Council India, bringing the creativity and everything here. So when the product is created, there's a psychology behind it. The design of the product, who will be consumer of the product. Uh, the game is created. What will be the environment of the game? Will this be jungle? Will this be this? Will this be city? Will this be village? Will this be what? Who will be the characters of it? This is all huge psychology. What will be the levels of it? How will, be the, uh, how will the monetizing strategy be? Everything, everything. There's a lot of psychology there. So gaming uh, theory has a lot of addictive theory in here. That's why you see on the basic theory, you will see that in game when you start, it starts from easy. So you have hardly figured out the game, and they immediately, oh, congratulations, you have these many dollars with you. You're like, wow. Now you can buy this, you can buy this, you can buy this. And you will become like, oh, you start feeling big. And then gradually you will see, and then in middle, it's all tough. So once you're addicted, they will give you even tough. But you're so much addicted that you can't leave. You're gone. That's why you see people, you know, you see stories, what people have done for gaming. What are PUBG or all other games, a lot of games. These are all addictive theories. That's why. Um, gadget you have, mobile phone, laptop, a life mirror. Think about it. When your phone has a 5% battery and there is no light, you know what you're going to do. Uh, or think about when you're not, you can't find the charger and your battery is, you know, uh, drowning. You see, see how you act. Have you seen my charger? You run in a way like you're running for oxygen. You want to save someone's life. And that's how we all are. Mobile phone. I can tell you one day my, this uh, mouse pad, keypad was not working. And it was like, I don't know how, how I'm going to spend my weekends. I mean, God, it becomes, then I used my air mouse and somehow I managed 
It was so painful day. We are all addictive to that level. Uh, beautification. People are addicted to beautifying themselves, tattooing, piercing, and whatnot. You name it and there are things. Uh, eatable, tea, coffee, fast food, non-veg. Some people are so much addicted to non-veg. Um, I, have, I have known, I mean, the people are, there's so much. So these are the common types of addictions. So not just common for the sake of common, we have covered almost everything in all areas that generally people don't think of when it comes to addiction. And not just habit, not just attachment, total addiction. Let me talk about it. Okay, cool. You, any, any question here? You got this? Uh, sir, yes, now please. is it small kids and childs are also becoming addictive of mobile phones. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay. So that will come into the gadget addiction. Yeah, yeah. this will. Okay. This will come. And now you know that whenever, if someone is addicted to something, then you know that uh, it can be amount of use, you know, the time, the length of time and the force of want. So keep the solution and strategy in your mind, okay? You will be a really effective counselor or psychologist. You know, help people with the strategy, not with simple tips and tricks. Simple tips and tricks are also very effective. But once you have this strategy in the mind, you can go longer. You, know, you can solve a lot of problems. So yeah. Hello. 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 Yes, uh, so what are parameters to uh, define a person is uh, addicted? Like uh, you said, gaming, the timing or frequency. Uh, what are parameters? How we uh, define a person or a, um, a kid is uh, going towards addiction? Right, right. Very good. Like, you know, the first slide, if you, have, if you remember, and the second slide. So second to first. How the addiction is born first. Interest, hobby, habit, compulsion. Addiction okay. and the first stage is hooked. Yes. Is he trapped and then hacked? Mm -hmm. Is he out of control time to time and then hijacked? Is he total out of control? So, this is how you'll know. There are stages you'll know and you will notice. And how do you know? Watching. If the kids, of course, watching because the kids can't really talk that deep, you know. But if there's adults, you can talk about this. You can ask their daily routine. People's daily routine and the time they spend, how much time they're spending. If someone is spending 10 hours watching a TV, do you think this is normal? No, this can be normal. If someone is every day eating pizza, do you think this can be normal? If someone works 18 hours and they have been working for two years, do you think this is normal? This is how. Sometimes it depends on people's capacity too. But you know that, that you know, when something is outliers, different than common, you will start feeling. And then you will see you, what category it is. It's like hooked stage, just like a trapped. They feel compelled, super compelled to do this. If they don't do this, they feel abnormal, unrest, uneasy. That's a hooked stage. Hacked stage can be, absolutely, you know, there is no way you can stop. Part of them is out of control. And hijack is absolutely, take them to a professional. Mm -hmm. So, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. This is how it's going to be. All right, cool. Let's see. Good news. Call it positive addiction. I have added this information here because I think this is super cool. While you are learning the, these things, you should also know the positive side of it, the bright side of it. So, you don't have to argue or debate with people that addiction is good or bad, but there's a different name altogether. That's called passion. Passion, and you'll be surprised, passion has same theory as addiction has. Exactly step by step. The difference is, what is the difference? The only difference is that result is different. The journey is exactly the same, but the end result is different. So if you want to develop a passion or you want to help someone develop a passion, you will follow the same addictive theory. 
same addictive theory. What would you start with? You will start with interest. You see that? And then you will come to hobby, then habit, then compulsion, and then passion. How do you do that? Simple. So let's say I hate maths, for example. Or I hate someone, for example. Okay. How do you do that? How do you create passion for someone? First is generating interest. And how do you generate interest? Different mediums, books, online, you know, following a master's, going to a seminars, any which way that you can do. Generating interest. The more interest you have, then second level is generating hobby. How do you generate hobby? Joining community, joining classes, you know, volunteering something. This will generate your hobby. Then what do you do? Generating, you know, making it a habit. How do you make it a habit? When you make it a practice, when you practice it. So you generate interest when you get to know this. You generate hobby when you're involved in it. And you generate, you practice it, you generate a habit when you practice it. And how do you practice? You know, maybe all alone, whatever you want to do, going to meetups, jam sessions, teach the same thing, whatever you're learning, do a part-time job, action time, then it happens. Then make it a routine, how to make it compulsive for you. Give it a space, a fixed space in your daily routine. Just like you eat every day, you sleep every day, give it a fixed space that cannot be override, cannot be missed out. Fixed space. Then this will become compulsive. And then what is passion? Passion is when you prioritize this over everything. Top most priority. Everything in your life is second when you have this. So when you generate finally passion, the passion normally happens. And how? Give it maximum time and space in your life. Maximum time. Out of 24 hours, maximum time. Space. With your friends, family, love partner, anyone. Maximum space. That is why you see a lot of people who are passionate about a lot of things. You will see they don't have a lot of social life the real social life. They may have a fan following, millions and billions. That's all right. Not a lot of social life. How? Because scientifically, they cannot have social life. Why? Because once you have something as a passion, it takes maximum time and space in your life. So of course, you won't have a time and space for others. That's why you'll also see people who are too much passionate in something. They generally don't have a great relationships. Because relationships has expectation, they have a certain thing to follow, they have a code, they have conducts, they can't do that. So they miss. This is a brilliant, if you uh, ever want to help someone, you know, who's not interested, who's not passionate. And, you know, as one of the best counselors or psychologists, what you can do is converting someone's addiction into some passion. This is gonna be a long journey, I must say. Can take a lot of hard work, but this is something that's worth trying. So that's something you can do. You can name this as a positive addiction. Any question here? Are you good? Do you understand? Do you think you can make use of it? Okay, Vati. Krishan, Alisha, Serg, and everyone else who are listening, and I can see them. I'll keep complaining throughout the session because I do. So, do you think you can make use of it positively somewhere? Very good. Very good. All right, very good. TK. Let's say what we have. Now come to solutions and strategies. Of course, I'm trying to give you a solution in every slide because where there is a problem, there is a solution. You just need to look creatively. The elements that has made problems are the same element is a part of solution too. But this is dedicated to solutions and strategy. What do you do? What do you do to 
help someone get out of addiction? Few things you can do. What are these things that you can do? So, first one is prevention. Prevention is the first thing. Prevent it if you at all can. So best way to solve a problem is what? To avoid a problem. Okay, that's the best way. Because solving a problem is not the best way to solve a problem. I must tell you this. Einstein said that every day we spend half of our days to create problems and other half to solving it, in solving it. And we think we are genius. That's how we do that. So you see that? If you really count, most of the problems we create by the time we reach to afternoon, and by the evening, somehow we finish the problems, we're like, ah, oh, hang on. So that's how we do. Just like you have lost something, and then you're in the pursuit of finding it, and you find it, you're like, wow. Yeah, happiness is also illusion sometimes. So sometimes you see that, um, um, let's say if you're unhappy because you did not get something, I'll give you plenty, put it very simple. So you're unhappy because you did not get it. Now you're unhappy because whatever you had, you lost it. Now when you just found it, what you lost it, you're just happy. You're not unhappy anymore. So happiness is very tricky, very relative. Right? So yeah. Let's see. So first is prevention. So prevention is the first step that you have. All right. Where you, what do you do? You prevent. What do you prevent it from? Always know that addiction has to do with place, time, and people. I can hear some background noise. Uh, not sure. Anyone who has a background noise, please put themselves on mute. Okay. Here we go. Tika. So, Prevention of what? So do you know that addiction has a pattern? Do you know that? Let's take an example. Smoking, for example. We are talking about smoking, for example. You know, there is a compulsive break. 130 hua, There is a compulsive break. Set time in the mind. Sham ho gaya, now this is a time. Place. There is a certain place where you go for smoking. Wahi jana hai. If you don't find that place, you feel very uncomfortable. Okay. People, there are certain people, so you see that, and that is a you know, that is the discovery of the session today. Now you know why people who drink they love a company. Because people help building that addiction. It's a difficult to nourish addiction without place, time, and people. It's a difficult. Do you see people who are, have addicted to substance abuse? They have a company. They have a set of people. They go, they sit. People who drink, they have a company. You usually see when people go for a smoking break, they take some people. Chalo. They have a company. And there's a certain place they will go in a certain time. So that's it. First solution is strategy. So when someone asks you simple, you say, oh, okay. Change them, manipulate them. So this is the first thing that you can do. Second is interruption. How you can also solve? Interrupting uh, something. Excuse me. Sir. Yes. Can I interrupt you? Oh, sure. Uh, <laughs> By all means. Uh, so uh, thank you, sir. So uh, like I'm in Punjab. So I, uh, I heard from uh, many, many people, the so youngsters, that there is a problem in our village. So yes. if I enter my village, I will be addicted again. My relapse will, uh, my relapse is sure. So if I left my village, if I leave my village, then it is fine. So they migrate to other places like uh, like uh, Dubai or America, according to their financial or economic conditions. Yeah. So uh, the place is the biggest problem for these people. They don't uh, find a place like a room, uh, or uh, like you said, um, their fields or koi bhi, uh, koi bhi as a place. Na? Yeah. It's not a, a particular place, but they think it is our village. It is our yeah. uh, place. It's our locality. 
if yeah. there are locality so how uh, i can uh, help them it's not their uh, village uh, it's not problem in their village but it's problem uh, in their behavior or something else like place is the biggest problem i find yes so you're right but it comes to so of course village is not the problem but what village village that exist not village they associate with the two villages they have first village is the village that actual physical village is second village is perceived how you mm-hmm. like every persons you will see are two persons one the way they are and second the way you perceive them mm-hmm. and can be two different thing so for some person you see in the village for some uh, for you maybe school you know government school doesn't matter that just a school for someone that's a memory that's a story mm. yes. that is emotions so yeah. perceived how i have associated with that village so you're mm. right village is absolutely cleansed there is no problem but they associate that village differently mm-hmm. and this is in like, their mind literally in their mind village is mm. clean pure just like mm. you know it was uh, a few years ago maybe a few decades ago mm. keeping you know punjab in mind so uh i would say that my general you know my professional suggestion would always be what is the best solution to solve any problem the best solution to solve any problem are the ones that work hmm yeah can be anything similarly like when you know someone is taken to a hospital do you see there are many ways a doctor can treat someone but when it comes to but they have life saving medicines they have life saving other uh, stuff so the best thing is that can help that person right now sometimes bad is even good before worse comes mm-hmm. so you will see yeah. that many a time some medicines injections some can affect the body but you know that at least this will stop him from being killed so yes it's a way that it works so the only line i can tell you right now is and this will conclude everything anything that can save them so they require 360 degree if you really want to make an impact and if you want to witness a change so there are many things about the change people like change but they hate to be changed yes yes right that's what mahatma gandhi said mm-hmm. and i'll tell you why because change is a painful process Mm, change is not yeah. easy. If change was so easy, why do we even read books and motivational stuff? You will just change. It's a painful process. So this is why you need to realize what you need to do. That if you so knowing change, you know, being change is different thing. Witnessing change is very different. Knowing that one day things will change, trying things to change, but witnessing change. If you really want to witness change, you have to. try 360 degree everything at a time so prevention is also used inter- interruption is used termination is used manipulation used emotions options limitations and motivations all at once yes strategizing then you can witness change change will anyway happen change always happens change is gradual you see that your nails grow every day you don't notice your hair grow every day you don't notice mm-hmm. but they do grow change is gradual even if you do nothing you will change but yes. if you want wanted change then you have to have a strategy in the place so that you can direct that change in your favor change will happen anyway so i think you know, that that could be my overall professional suggestion if you are thinking to change a community or a village yes yes okay, for us all maybe all right thank you very much uh then we have you know interruptions is like manipulation so you know that it's a pattern so if you know that i really feel like i have a urge of smoking right now one or the other wave can be interrupted and gradually this will start dipping down like i remember every time i would sit to watch tv my mom uh, she will call me manipulating she will call me sabin papa ka phone hai usne phone hai abhi to baat kiya tha and then she would call me and get me engaged in something else and now of course you know we learned ki nahi 
and then I would laugh. Ki, nee, 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 I'm serious. So she will find a way to manipulate my pattern because she would know ki bhai bhai dekhe, maybe I don't know why she did it. She did it. So manipulation, creating urgency immediately. Let's say I'm feeling, I'm having an urge of drinking. Create an urgency. You know what? You can do it later on. This is something is really super important. If you don't do that, this is what happened. Okay. You create, you know, the creative urgency in a way that you stop thinking about that stuff. You start thinking about something else. I'll see you. So in criminology, uh, uh, whenever, you know, someone feels the first time when you go uh, for operations, you feel nervous about things. Maybe the first time when you go for interview or something. So let's say if you're nervous about interview, what they do is they will divert your attention, something else. So I saw one of the examples. So there was a person and he was feeling very, very nervous himself because he had to interview a criminal, ask questions, you know, kind of. So he was feeling nervous. The other, the supervisor said that, you know what? There's something on your forehead here. I don't know what's wrong here. And he's like, I'm sorry, what? Say, I don't know, but this is not looking good. This is really bad. Now, every time he's focused on this, his fear is gone, ki dissolve. Focus. That's the beauty of focus. That anything it focuses can change. And it's a so simple, so innocent, it can only focus one thing at a time. Now, you must be asking, how do you do multitask? That's a habit. Focus only requires initially. When you focus something too much and for too long, it becomes your second nature. Like first time when you learn bicycle, there were a lot of instructions, right? Sit tight, look forward, keep pedaling. You're like, well, well, you don't know how to do it. But now you see that it doesn't matter. You sit tight or you keep pedaling or not, and you look forward, look backward. It doesn't matter. So it's the way that we get it. Our body becomes a second nature. Termination, change of routine, change of need. Like cigarette replaced with e-cigarette, change of routine. Some people have a habit of doing certain stuff in a certain time. Change of routine, right? Uh, their shift changes, a routine changed, something happens. You see that? A lot of addictions will go away anyway. It's a simple thing. Manipulation, you know, change of objectives. You can change the objective of that thing. So one of the smartest ways, one of the smartest kind of counselors, addiction counselor you can be, let the process be the same, but put the process in a way that the end result should be positive. Don't, don't play with the process. I can give you a living example. So I would always insist to go outside. Like, so when you're a kid, it generally happens with you, right? Anyone is going outside, I'm going to. Why? I don't know. I'm just one of those. You become a baggage kind. But yeah, <laughs> so otherwise, if uh, my mom would say, okay, you know, my, he would just, maybe, you know, she was manipulating, of course. So she said, So I was happy and she got her job done too. Or maybe, you know, but they definitely want to see cartoons. So English. What I mean to say is, there's a manipulative approach, approach and I'm certain you can find something good. So by the time everyone, if you just want to watch cartoon with or without my help, at least for God's sake, you have a better language, better English. Maybe you'll get a job soon. Something like this. So manipulate the end result. You know, do this. Emotions, of course, one of the most effective ways uh, of solution strategies. Showing care, costing relationship, um, reasons of sorrow, causing stress. You know, you see that sometimes people see that. Um, so somebody who is uh, too heavy, you know, too over healthy, uh, fat, what people say, get a slim body, get back to your, uh, you know, what is that? Get a slim body and get your ex-girlfriend back or something like this. So they get excited. Okay. They keep working hard. So sometimes emotions work or sometimes it happens, you know, if you are addicted to something, uh, alcohol, and you know that wife has been saying many times, you don't understand, maybe kids, said one thing or sometimes that's why you'll see many a times the you know advertising agency they use kids to uh, pass a very strong message because the kids can uh, kids can and kids have very pure uh, sense of um, messaging so that impacts a lot um, so emotions you know cost what it causes, options 
like organic cigarette and also calling friends instead of a separated partner let's say you're addicted to someone and you know that you know so relationship sometimes it happens when you're too addicted to someone you become too desperate so desperate no matter to what level they have brought you to you again want to go back to them they want to kill you but you again want to go back to them whole universe will convince you don't do that don't do that you will again do that why because you are not longer you are no longer you that's why that's simply why now so options you know instead of calling a separated partner or someone else and again you feel really bad call a friend maybe somebody who can understand you maybe something like this let's say if you really keep playing games instead of keep playing indoor games all those stuff why don't you you know put someone in the practice of doing outdoor games they'll be physically so healthy and so good where people have almost stopped playing outside outdoor games limitations is very uh, very powerful uh, strategies i would say that but that depends where it works where it doesn't um like you know and these days i think all the moms and all do that right phone milega ek ghante ke liye 8 to 9 that's all and then you don't get phone or if you some day i don't know but i see people they do parenting control we have in tv channel punishment system they have you know if you do this you will never get it again okay and because of that punishment they don't do it um motivation system also works very so punishment is if you exceed the time you are missing these two days like in us they are generally you know see if the kids do something like this most of the time what they do that take okay. you're buried home you're not going going out of home for a few days or something they're not allowed so any punishment system definitely works motivation also does it's like if you don't use phone during your exam times you get a new phone what do you say cool so both works and knowing what to use when to use how much to use depends on you how smart you are how wise you are um motivation like stop alcohol get slim body so yeah when you have a crave of alcohol when you say oh i wish i could be that slim so yeah the day your this emotions you know become powerful you will stop so you become your own motivator then you don't need third person and this is this you know so as a psychologist and a counselor you got to be very smart these days why because your counselors are very manipulative so yeah so not just a traditional counselor and psychologist step ahead know everything that they do that they are so no drugs get your partner back less internet better memory now let's say you say that the person or the kids who watch too much tv lose the memory no i really care about my memory i'm not going to do this whatever and however you can convince someone so these are the solutions the strategy uh, solution strategies that you have any question that you have do you think these things are making sense are we able to uh, get takeaways you can use it feel free to give your own uh, feedback alisa shreyasi sahab and the other people who i cannot see sir in manipulation you have mentioned uh, in bracket watch cartoons in english so what does that mean here ah oh, yeah change of objectives let's say manipulation means i want to watch cartoons mm -hmm. okay but now maybe you know the only channel of cartoon that i have is in english only no hindi cartoon because hindi cartoon is not going to benefit so you do what you want to do manipulation means i will let you do what you want to do without disturbing you but not only you will enjoy i will also enjoy because the results will change i am getting some benefit out of it that's my days because otherwise imagine if you ask them to take additional classes for language for english it's a task right so while they are doing what they are doing you also got a job done without letting them know uh, like to teach uh, a child uh, to be well spoken in english we right. can uh, use uh, the manipulation technique here exactly. that you will allow to watch the cartoon 
but you have to watch that cartoon in english language absolutely just twist this but is how we manipulate cartoon right so and while they are watching anyway enjoying you know they are learning really good language okay so, yeah. thank you sir yeah that's, that's something that you can do so oh, sir, uh, yes please it is said that uh, we can uh, if we do meditation or yoga or these exercises we can develop uh, like more self control and self esteem like we can be very controlled so what do you say about it oh yeah i okay so about me i believe in anything and everything that i don't know enough okay so if anything that has changed one person on the earth i consider that as a powerful let alone yoga that changed billions of people i would say no doubt about it question is it's a difficult so between a spiritual life and a material life there has to be a bridge right someone who is very modern for example for them to understand the benefit of yoga will require an intelligent person who can make a bridge between the life they are living and the life they could live so this requires someone in between who probably has experience of both lives you know because what happens to generally people who are just don't believe in yoga you teach them they reject and they reject so hard that they might you know there, there could be a chance in the future they could accept it now they won't accept it why because their experience experience is a great thing you know so once you have a bitter experience for something you will reject everything related to that so it's always important for someone if you're introducing something to someone you got to be really good at it being a teacher being a mentor and being a promoter is a different thing so someone can be a bit of profound yoga guru but if he's not a good promoter he might not leave a great experience for people even if this is a great thing So yeah, it requires a bridge, I believe, and of In course, fact, sir, uh, it is not just uh, like all the examples we saw. Uh, I consider yoga exercises also being very addictive. If it someone is. does it, so we are like addicted to it yeah. because I am. Of <laughs> course, of course, no, 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 goes without saying. In fact, like you see, the addiction is anything, anything, and literally anything. you know that you see is more more than everything when you start doing something more than everything it can replace anything but question is as long as this is not harming you again this can only be aside so if this is not harming you it's okay people are knowingly and knowingly directly and directly are addicted to things question is does it have the harmful consequences like you guys said if you have cool if you don't have okay Yeah. So, all right. Thank you very much. Let's see. Yes, please. Uh, so I have one question here. Please. Uh, usually, I have come across a few drug addict friends around. Mm -hmm. I have seen them more. Uh, they are the introvert. They are mostly introvert. They are not that social enough. So, and uh, whenever they, uh, sometimes I do. It, try to you know, indulge with some conversation or something with such uh, people around mm -hmm. but sometimes they get you know the mind they get lost somewhere i have come across a few of my friends who have gone to various uh, rehab centers yeah. where they were meant to do all this yoga they went for this uh, uh, vipassana the vipassana mm -hmm. is one of the process where a person is supposed to stay in one room for an entire 3 months somewhere like that but even after coming from those uh, process uh, i have seen uh, the person is uh, right right now he's not that addicted to all these things but he's no longer social enough right? you know like he is always towards himself or something so i am little curious to know how can we bring such person into more social more interactions that good. is what happened yeah right good question there are many reasons why they don't become uh why they don't socialize first of all there is a there is a lot of insecurity if you start socializing again or if you start opening yourself 
or you start exposing yourself to all those factors, there's a good chance it can come back to you. And people never want to relive the same painful experience in life when they did not even have a hope. First thing. Second thing, when you have, when you have an, especially when you talk about, no, Vipassana and all, it's a different experience altogether. You know, you kind of live a life that you never thought of. I mean, just like lockdown. Lockdown is a Vipassana for many people. I mean, I don't know what market is now. <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea of how the world is possibly. Generally, it happens because what happens, understand this. These practices, spirituality and all, they start, you know, they bring you outside in. You're so much lost inside you that you have less interested outside the world. That generally happens with people, you know, who, who are into spiritual community uh, practices and all. There's so much to explore, to talk, to think, to imagine. There's so much inside that they are less interested outside. And same thing happened with people, you know, who becomes you know, very materialistic. They have so much, they see so many things outside. Ah, they're so boring inside. So you will see that people who are very spiritual, like they have lived or practices, they do practice like this. They can live with themselves for a long time. And this is one of the, you know, identification of, I mean, something is said in spirituality. The day you have figured out that you can live with you and only you, you've achieved something. Why? Because that gets you out of this dependency. Things, people, and the other stuff. That's one thing to say. I mean, and that's good for a lot of people. So I think generally happens, people start inward. The reason, what I would suggest as a professional, maintain a balance. Always maintain a balance. Why? Because when you become too much of inward, what generally happens is, of course, you have to cut out of the society. And somewhere, if there is a social, if there are social needs, you have family, you have people, and you know that people can affect people. One person unhappy in a family, entire family can be unhappy. So it can really impact a lot of things. So I would say that uh, first, do not try to. You know, change is a journey. Let people live that journey. Sometimes people were too extrovert. They did and tried everything they never wanted to do. So you must see people who are very extrovert, one day they become very introvert. Because their journey just shifts. When they start realizing there is much less outside, they start finding this inside. Generally happens with people. So I would say let them be. Change is a gradual process. They will find their way out. Because if you force then what we do is we try to make things unnatural. Right now, this is the way they are natural. No matter how unnatural this looks outside of the world. Right? So for me, it looks, what happened? And they're like, okay, oh, I'm cool. I'm okay. So let them be, you know, let them follow the course of the change. Change has a course. And then gradually, you know, people are anyway, Every person changes, and the change is the only fact. So let them change. Change is a happy journey. Introvert, extrovert. I would rather say that, you know, there's a lot of theories you will learn about introvert. There's a lot of benefits of being introvert. You cannot be creative if you're not introvert. You cannot be a, a scientist if you're not introvert. Have you seen scientists coming on a TV and talking about, yeah, this is the research I did. They don't do that. They can't do that. There's certain personalities. Every personality has a lot of beautiful things that only these kind of people can do. So I would say as a friend, help them. Help them to cover the course of their life. You know, help them whenever they need your help. If sometimes. And uh, good. Natural is always the best. Uh, right. Sir, yes. uh, can, I yes. add, can I add something? Yes, yes. Uh, yes. Like uh, a year, yeah, about it's been a year and a half that uh, I did an internship and they took us to a rehabilitation center uh, for like, it was a drug de-addiction center only. And there uh, we were like, beforehand we were told that everything they'll tell you will be some kind of manipulation 
and there will be some kind of manipulation in it it will not be the real truth and then uh, what we experienced was that in reality what they were saying and the way they represented themselves as if ki hame jo ho raha hai we are forced to do that we are not here by our own uh, like way that is obvious but they were making their uh, own family as if they look bad in that context uh, some of them said ki hame yahan pe force karke bheja gaya hai and uh, there was a uh, uh, male uncle and he was like about 55 years old and he said ki my wife died and that which is why uh, i uh, became an alcohol addict and which is why i am here and he was like very voluntarily he told us that uh, my son uh, sent me here because i really wanted to improve myself i could see myself going down the hill so uh, this experience uh, and the way and everything you are uh, telling uh, here is uh, like very um, it goes hand in hand because this is what uh, you know an addiction does to you yeah yes it it does you know and many times so yeah few people you will see and that depends on what stage of improvement they are if they are initial they will lie too much can no they will force too much they will try to break in break out they do all the stuff once they start living there many people start liking it because a change is also addictive you imagine changing back the way you could never thought of oh this is so addictive you start liking yourself so much that like, wow so i can be back i can be a normal person once again oh it's so fascinating to people people start cooperating um you will see in a cell you will see a lot of um interns a uh, lot um um you will a uh, lot of interns or maybe if you go to any cell or any jail you will see people there they are not the same violent people they're different so counseling happens for them they realize the facts a lot of stuff a lot of stuff it was beautiful thing good but thank you for mentioning the link all right this is a treating an addict please remember this is a super important uh, slide apart from all this good slide because this slide so, makes yes if i may ask like yeah. all the points you told about are like uh, for the people of the same age or like kids but what about the elder people because they don't listen and they try to dominate you when ever you try to tell uh, them something nice or something uh <laughs> so i'll tell you why so no elder people it happens because generally and i i, I can relate to what you're trying to say many times so i have a friend her father smokes a lot uh she is 22 and uh, she keeps complaining about this all time father doesn't listen my father is father so dominates you know puffs away the idea with elder people definitely i think a counseling is definitely a, they need professional small things and these things cannot help they need a really mature professionals mature counselors somebody who can start things from the ground so it requires so for elder people too the same thing applies the pattern remains the same it's just that advice does not advice is not a counseling please keep in mind right or um many a times uh we ask someone not to do things why because we care for them well uh what do you care for they don't care for so you don't care of course if i don't care for something and you say you care for it means you don't care because you don't care what i care so people take it very different uh even with elder people applies the same thing but just that to speak with them you need a you need a different style different level sometimes your counseling strategy and style depends on the person that is in front of you your counselor how are they you know are they to the point are they like stories are they good in the rapport building are they like humor or they very straightforward it depends but everything starts from here certainly again no no a different other theories same thing for elder person too it just that yeah it becomes a little difficult to manage elder person because uh, some formulas don't work on them but that's okay they always believe like uh, they have a greater lesson than us 
they know life more about life than us so they always try to dominate by those ideas yeah of course and even if uh, and, and i will tell you something in between so there are three kinds of truth you know that right my truth your truth and real truth the real truth is yes they have they actually have more life experience than us but what they don't realize is the experience is of no use if there is never the same situation if i know how to ride bicycle only if there is a bicycle riding a bicycle cannot be compared similar with riding motorbike so this is their mistake and this is our mistake we think like oh how come only you have experience do you have more yes the truth is they do have more so their claim is right but what they fail to understand is the experience is of no use because this is never the same situation never the same time never the same world so they might be half true but not completely true so they are mistaken differently and of course we are modern time people how we can listen to anyone so yeah we, we are on a different level anyway full of ego styles and all so yeah this hurts them and what they do is hurts us so you must have heard that joke right so a father was being irritated giving the pocket money to a son and said you know what when i was in your time in only 5 rupees i would come with a bag of vegetables son says papa the day is gone now we have camera there we cannot do that <laughs> so what he wanted to say is yeah so that's what it is i would say yeah we are also in a denial mode many times for many things it takes quite a person to see the truth just like the truth and that, that can be any person it's just a journey that you realize so yeah they're also right <laughs> anyway let's see how do you treat an addict first disappoint me let's take about it. addiction can disappoint your emotions and your relations so get it any anyone who is an addict do not expect an addict to value to care your emotions or relation please don't why because they are not they that's why if i am not me why are you expecting things that you are expecting from me i am no longer me and if you expect they will break your trust they will lie to you they will cheat they will do anything and everything why because they are hijacked why because they are hacked learning the experience and experiencing the experience are not the same thing the urge that they have to do things you can't have it so live with those 50 50 possibility and give them this space and respect give them a space to change because they will change so never expect an addict to respect your emotions and relations so don't expect oh you never said this to me how come because i have no longer mean that's why i did and maybe i realize maybe that's too late to realize but i will realize maybe 50 years now never know so don't really expect not at all even as a professional or counselor sometimes it happens happens to me my ego gets hurt many a times you know because when you have been a good successful counselor like how come he is not improving happens that should not happen why because that's not my job my job is not to take care of my ego my job is to help people so second is don't force an addict when you deal with an addict don't force too much and there is you no know, in a lighter mode i would say what do you think if you force too much they will die soon they anyway going to die they will die soon they will kill themselves because people who are addict do you realize they are already helpless when people suicide people don't suicide when they don't have means but they don't even have hope for means like it was easy for you to bear this lockdown because you know you knew the one day everything is going to be okay imagine if there was no hope 
never. Ah, it's very. I, I remember one of the lines I was watching um, web series, and then this, you know, counselor, counselor said, I'm sorry. So all those days I've been lying to you. Counselor says, oh, I know you have been lying to me all those days, but I think you gave me a lot of hope. That hope kept me continued. So you give me a hope. Counselor said, uh, the counselor said, no, no, no. I didn't give you hope. I sold you hope. Because I was charging money for this. And then counselor said something really beautiful. Say that? That's okay. Hope is worth for any price. So, yeah. That's quite something that you can see. So don't force too much. Right? Uh, they already feel helpless. One of the worst feelings, one of the worst feelings of a human can experience is helplessness. You watch this movie, uh, Sanju, and you will realize the word help, helplessness is the worst feeling, one of the worst, definitely. When you can do everything and you're doing nothing, do you imagine how it feels? Oh, it feels really bad. Take. Take a break in the routine or in sessions. If you're doing a you know, session or something, it's okay. Don't act like, oh, after so successfully you managed for 20 days, again you drank. Don't act. Don't see that they broke the pattern and broke the rules. See that they had a 20 good successful days. They failed once in 20 days now. People pass the same way. People fail the same way. It's okay if they break the rule. No, oh, machine. That's okay. Why? Because right now you learn and you know that addiction is not a problem unless this has a harmful consequence. The same thing is it. And always remember, bad is always good before worse comes. So if it's coming down from worst to worse to bad, you're in progress. That's a matter. Work. Work their way, but find your way out. But this is the smartest, as a smartest psychologist or counselor you can do. Work their ways. I'll do what you ask me to do, but things will happen what I want to happen, not what you want to happen. And that's gonna be the smartest strategy. So work their ways, because what happens if you work their ways, they feel that this is effortless. And you change. Manipulative. Be there for them and know that no, sometimes they can do nothing. Understand this. It is possible. That sometimes they just cannot do nothing. I have counseled, I don't, I don't know how many addicts, especially substance abuse. And uh, initially I was like hurt because they would promise, yeah, promise you, I won't do this again. Please ask my papa, please get me out of here. Once I get me, get me out of here, I will do anything and ensure I'll go back to school. I'll do anything all through them. I was like, okay, I mean, being a human, you are like drawn, you're like, okay, and you feel so bad. And of course, you know, as a guardian, he would respect me and I would take it on me, so I promise. And they failed me, they cheated me, they deceived me. And then I realized they can't do that. So yeah, it happens. So sometimes they can just do nothing Everything that you have worked so hard to get them right, they can spoil everything in a minute. And all you can do and you should do is watch and do nothing. It's a painful process. Change is not easy. So this is what you can do. Last is stand with them and stand by them. All right. And don't take it on your ego. Because, you know, they have nobody else anyway. So stand with them stand by them all right always so when you're treat, treating an addict keep these things in mind either you're treating an addict as a friend or somebody is a part of your family or someone is yes. uh, people addiction these are the solutions that we have when it comes to people especially keep a relationship log okay um, if you just want to find out if this is addiction or not uh, record incidents of benefit and loss in a relationship how many benefits you have in a relationship, how many benefits you don't have a relationship, 
sometimes this is okay. So there is a dedic- there is a chapter, you know, we cover, you know, course like relationship, and that has a very detailed understanding of that how you can uh, literally um, create a log, how you can decide what relationship to keep, when to let it go, when not to let it go, how badly you want, a lot of stuff, detail of it. Find supportive network if you're addicted to people, supportive network, similar kind of people, you know. Um, friends, relatives, workmates, online friends, perfectly okay. I'm sure you must have heard this quote that people may, don't have a real friends in life, they have a lot of friends in Facebook. That's okay. That's okay. Because you don't need people all the time. Sometimes you do. So, this is the question. Why do you need permanent solutions? Sir, will be joining us soon. Hi, I think, did, did I? Yeah, you made a... Uh, oh, okay. Sorry about that. Okay, let me quickly share this screen and we are good. So question is, I was saying the why do you need permanent solutions if you, the problems are temporary? Uh, sir, yes. Jyoti here. Yes, please. Uh, I have one small question here. Uh-huh, please. Uh, you told here that work, work their way but friend, find your way out. Right. Means it's like a negotiation? Oh, no, no, no. That's a smart way. Like I give you a no, lemon example. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I used to insist to go outside. My mother would say, Ki, aap le jao. So she would talk to father. Ki, ja, iske baal katwa de na. <laughs> so same okay. thing. You should be smart enough. Ki, hai. You want to do this? Do this. But you find a way. Ki, ultimate, it has to benefit. Okay. But not a negotiation. No, no, no. Not. no. Negotiation can also be things you never know. That yeah. is something I think, you know, in a relationship, uh, we learned that, uh, not in a relationship, there is a chapter I, I forgot. There was, there was another chapter, one of the chapters where we learn handling kids and all. So yeah, but not necessarily negotiation now. Yeah, uh, yeah, but e- even handling children, you know, sometimes we tell, if you do this one, I will give this one or I l- like this, no? So, yeah. uh, punishment and yeah, punishment and motivation system has to be there, yes. Yeah, yeah. thank you. No problem. So allow multiple attachments. Oh, this is one of the good tricks that you can learn. Problem is not attachment. Problem is too much attachment. So when you have, when you're too much attached with things, share your attachment. They will never have too much nowhere. And then you're cool. Nothing will be painful. So allow multiple attachments, music, sports, you know, experiment, magic, fitness, whatever. And then you see that, you know, when you, because what happens when your attention, time, energy is shared, addiction is gone. Addiction is a name when you have something too much of it. When some could be shared, it's gone. All the ill effect is gone. Uh, connect with limitless. Eight billion people, all right? And you know that the people are just a part of life. People are not life. Because you are happy without them and you will be happy without them if you have to be. So uh, understand the truth. 8 billion people. Never say that. I don't have a friend. Have you searched 8 billion people? How many people you really asked or maybe find out? So there are 8 billion people. It's not, I understand sometimes you, you, it may feel like that your world is who you have known. The question is you don't want to know more people. Do. Join different community. Join hobby classes. Go to uh, you know, different world and all this. You'll find a lot of people. So there are 8 billion people. Never think you don't know enough, you don't have enough. Go find out. Breaking connections, contacts, singing around, sneaking possibility. If you're addicted to people, break connections. That usually people do, right? In a movie, old filmy style, a picture part of the say, jala de te, say, photo say. So you see that? So this is a part of it, breaking connections. Because when you see, hear, realize, experience, same thing, it evokes all those emotions. So yeah, that can be one of those things. It's like out of sight, out of mind. You know, getting things out. It becomes painful that time, but you know, because emotions fade away over the period of time. You get a genuine life around, life just around you. You know, getting up, working, evening, night, festival, everything. You get a genuine everything around you. 
I would say that one of the easiest way to get out of addiction is change your lifestyle. Have a few lifestyles in life and keep switching from one to another. It will help you a lot. And all you have to do is, you just have to change your 24 hours, that's all. Because the entire life is made of 24 hours. If you can change your 24 hours, you, know, you change your entire life. So that's simple uh, things that you're addicted with. What are the solutions with things? Tell, okay, um, friends, family, and coworkers about your quit date. If you're addicted to something, tell your friends, you know what? I'm gonna quit smoking. What happens when you say this thing, it becomes a social pressure on your mind. You're like, again, that person will ask, did you quit smoking? And you feel like, you know, uh, tell people, share with these people. When you have uh, addiction with things, attend, attend quitting groups, especially campaigns and webinars like this. How to do that, how to do that. And always remember, uh, it's never about that. What sometimes people do that, you know, let's say they are looking for a good webinar uh, to, uh, for addiction, let's take example of this webinar. So many people must be thinking, God, how do I know if this webinar is gonna be good or not? Question is, not everything you know or you will learn will be good. But the only good thing you are looking for may be in that. So not everything everywhere is good. But the only thing you're looking for will be somewhere in that. And if you can get that something, goal is accomplished. So that is a thought uh, we should have. We shouldn't really think about that. Ki, patani, se kya milega? Because the one, so think about it, you know, for a business people, business doesn't matter. For a, you know, for a person who wants to learn, persons doesn't matter. Who is it coming from? So keep that mindset that if you want to get out of it, anything is good. Anything that can save you, anything that can help you, anything that gives you instant relief to. Believe in that possibility. Set up. Um, set up a support system like mentor, coach, doctor, people you respect, people you love. You know, when you get addicted to something, set up a support. You know, sometimes call them, speak with them, visit, pay, visit. A lot of stuff you can do. Miss the chance to be a part of that circle every time you can. Every time you're invited to party, say no. Or try to, try to find a way to miss a chance. You know, always make an excuse. If you cannot make, make an excuse, put yourself in a troubled routine. That, yeah, I'm sorry, I want to go, but I cannot go because I have something more important. Miss that chance every time. Otherwise, you know, this, this is, what is it? So these all things that I'm talking about are triggers. Once you have triggers, it will be very difficult for you to get out of it. So miss all those triggers intentionally, right? Sometimes you see that when people get angry and we have, you know, uh, there is a topic of anger counseling, they will talk about the trigger and fuel. See, sometimes you know that if you live around that person, there will be a lot of triggered, things will be triggered. If you speak this thing, that's why I know many times you see that when people start a topic, people say, I'm sorry, I don't want to talk anything on this. Why? There's nothing wrong in topic because there are a lot of stuff in the topic that can trigger that person. So miss all the trigger. Drink, you know, drink more water and juicy and healthy snacks. The more your body is hydrated, not, not with alcohol, the other stuff that I'm talking about, you won't feel the urge of alcohol. Um, I can give you a layman example, not very scientific, but very layman and good too. Do you feel, let's say when you're thirsty, you feel like taking a cold drink really badly. But when you're not thirsty at all, how often do you feel like do you have an urge of taking cold drink? No, not much. That's what it is. If you can understand that simple thing, keep yourself hydrated. A hydrated body does not require all those things. There won't be a physical need. It will not trigger to emotions. Like when, you're, when your stomach is full, Pizza, even pizza is not craving. Because you're like, bad me, maybe not right now. That's how it works. 
learn learn more of its negative and serious impact right but i know you must be thinking okay on cigarette sab jagah likha hota hai still people smoke right there was a very creative ad i saw on youtube uh the ad was from that guy i forgot that actor name so what he was doing is you know he uh he was the, the picture you know the the ad showed that he is cooking something and he is putting everything nail polish and then uh mosquito ka jo kuch tha na wo aur kya kya different different oil all those things yeah the bathroom uh, toilet cleaner and everything in that tub and then what is doing is like okay aur ho gaya mera recipe taiyar and he brought cigarette he said in season se milkar bana hai ye do you really want to take it and that was so creative because now when you smoke you will think of oh, god so i'm using that thing i'm also taking that so it was very creative way of presenting things so delay the urge you know is is always say that if you have a chance to do good things or something that will be good for you don't delay and anything that you think is not good delay delay can save you from a lot of unwanted things to happen in life so it's not bad um you know to to be delayed it just that this can this has its own benefit change your routine this will change you know this will avoid the trigger one of the easiest way change your routine that'll be easiest way to do that yeah the, the session was brilliant actually the 3h i learned that is you know and the hacked and hooked and hijacked those three are uh, pretty good enough to understand the addicted person and um, take a solution ahead i think that's a good point thank Absolutely. you thank you very much thank you so much